using the work of specialists in an audit. Here are some examples of specialists who the auditor may work with and whose work the auditor may rely upon in an audit. An actuary, if you don't know what an actuary is, this is someone who is uh, incredibly good at math. And these are the people who predict how long you're probably going to live based on your life in terms of pensions and assessing what your, the pension liability should be, uh, insurance determining what your lifespan should be uh, for the insurance purposes, you know, super morbid, but incredibly smart people. Valuation specialists or appraisers, these people are going to help you to determine what the value of an asset should be. Uh, industry specialists, so someone who's really good at construction or really good with cryptocurrency. Tax specialists, not, you know, if you're an auditor, you're probably not a tax specialist. Probably bring in someone from there. Engineers, lawyers, very much specialized in their own industry. When the auditor uses the work of a specialist in an audit, so if you're auditing the income tax line, you'll probably work with a tax specialist. If you're auditing the contingencies and commitments, and if they've accrued those items, you'll probably talk with a lawyer. So when the auditor uses the work of these specialists, he or she should obtain an understanding of the message and assumptions used by the specialists in order to assess their competence. If uh, your specialist is saying, oh, I put a number in a hat and I draw the number and that's what I think this should be, I would say that's not, not very confident. But if you're looking at the work of the specialist and they're saying, oh, here's this complex model, you know, I'm actually taking the time to do this. It takes into account a lot of different factors that are important. Yeah, that probably would mean they're pretty competent. The auditor should also always review the specialist's work. At the end of the day, you're taking responsibility for this. So definitely review that work. In addition, the auditor may perform substantive procedures to verify the specialist findings. Extra checks, right? Extra checks because you're taking responsibility for this. See if the specialist has connections to the client. However, this is not required unless the specialist's findings could be considered unreasonable. Lastly, there should be an understanding of the nature of the work to be performed between the auditor, client, and specialist. If you're going to hire all these specialists to help you, you should probably tell the client. And not probably, I mean, you will tell the client. That's what I'm getting at here and full communication, transparency with all parties. What about referring to the work of a specialist in an audit? Well, the auditor can, now this is important because we're talking about responsibility. If you refer to other work, there's a responsibility of that work. There's different cross-referencing between work. You're acknowledging that you used work that's not your own. So lots of implications here. The auditor can refer to a specialist in the auditor's report as a result of the specialist's findings, if the auditor includes an explanatory paragraph to the modified opinion. Now, generally, an auditor would not refer to a specialist when expressing an unmodified opinion. So, the main time you will refer to the specialist is when you have a modified opinion, and then you're going to add an explanatory paragraph discussing what the specialist uncovered or what work they did. And also, the auditor may need the specialist's permission before referencing them in the report. Kind of like, all right, don't bring me into this unless you check with me first. Referring to someone else in a report seemingly lessens the responsibility that the auditor takes on as weight is given to that individual. The kicker here, right? If we're saying, oh, yeah, the uh, specialist gave us this number and confirmed this other number and told us how to run payroll, it's kind of like you are giving the impression that, hey, I, as the auditor, didn't do as much work. And that's not what we should be doing. That's why we have these discussions and these rules around, around referencing specialists. Regardless of referring to a specialist or not, the auditor still maintains all the responsibility for the opinion and the work. That's why we discussed previously, you're going to review the work. You're going to make sure they, they used competent procedures to, to do their work. And we should indicate in the report that referring to a specialist does not reduce the auditor's responsibility. So not only does it not reduce our responsibility, but we also have to say, hey, this does not reduce our responsibility. Awesome, awesome there. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. 
Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.